Hey everyone, I'm Mike Kazmer. Today we're down in Morgan Hill, California, taking a look at Specialized's new Levo SL. If you're familiar with the Levo name, you'll know that, yes, this is an e-bike, but this one looks a little bit different. A little bit smaller profile. From a distance, it'd be easy to mistake it for a regular mountain bike. So Specialized took the SL 1.1 motor that was first seen in their Creole road bike. Yes, they have an electric road bike, if you weren't aware of that. Um, they took that and they put it in the mountain bike. And then that, accompanied with a little bit smaller battery, allows them to put the weight of this bike as it sits here, uh, it's a size large S-Works, and at 38.25 pounds. And that's impressively light for an e-bike. These bikes typically range in weight, uh, you know, somewhere in the higher 40s, even in the 50s for the bigger ones. The Levo SL has 29 inch wheels, 150 millimeters of travel front and rear, and the geometry is pretty much the same as the previous Levo, except for one thing, that chain state length. Because of the smaller motor, Specialized was able to trim the back end down a little bit, and the chain stays are now at 437 millimeters versus 455 millimeters on the other Levo. Pretty significant difference, and that is something you would notice on the trail. You know, it's a little bit easier to get that back end around tight turns, gives it that kind of nimble, maybe more playful feel that Specialized was going for with this bike. We're here at Trailside, and I thought I'd just take a moment to kind of go run through the features and basically how this bike works, um, just in case you're not familiar with the Levo or the Kinevo. So, ready to go for a ride, push that button there, turns it on, and you're ready to go. And there's three different power settings, so you can kind of start out, there's a Eco, Trail, and then Turbo. So, I found that riding in the Trail mode kind of good for everything, and that Turbo mode gives you a nice little boost. You can easily switch between the modes just by this little button here, push that, the beeps let you know which mode you're in. If you're sprinting around and also want to go to turbo, there's a little part on the top here. You can push that, bumps it right up to that max power output. Since we're talking about an e-bike, we probably need to talk about battery life, or at least how much battery there is. There's this much. As far as battery power goes, this bike provides 480 watt hours, and that number includes a range extender. And what the range extender is, this little guy right here plugs into the side of the frame, fits in your water bottle cage, so you kind of have to decide whether you want to be hydrated or powered, it's up to you. The S-Works version comes with a range extender. If you wanted to buy one of these for the bikes that don't come with it, uh, somewhere around $400. Let's take a closer look at some of the other details of this bike, kind of where everything's located. So beginning with that motor, it sits right here, extends to about here, and you've got your battery above that. Um, battery's not, doesn't come out that easy. It's not something that you'll take in and out after every ride. They've got a charging port on the other side more than likely keep this in your garage or in your home and just plug it into that rather than taking the battery in and out. Again, they're trying to save weight, so that's why you don't get a quick release battery hatch or anything like that. Right here, you've got your power button, displays the amount of battery remaining. Um, they also have their mission control app, which that gives you a more detailed readout of exactly how much juice you've got left. And that can uh, allow you to really program the motor to work exactly how you'd like. And there's also an additional um, add-on display you can purchase. It mounts right up here, again, just gives you that quick view of your speed, um, your power, and how much battery life is remaining. Um, you got a little flip chip in here that allows you to alter the head tube angle by half a degree, somewhere between 66, 65.5. Got that nice chain stay protector, keep everything quiet. Just kind of has all the typical features we're used to finding on Specialized's recent line of bikes. Don't get a swap box though, kind of a bummer, but they need a room for that battery, so that sits in there. That's kind of how it goes with all the e-bikes the e out there. All right, well now let's talk about what really matters. How's this thing ride? Well, to find out, yesterday we headed out for a shakedown ride, around 40 miles, 8,000 vert. It's a good way to really start getting acquainted with the motor and just how the whole package works. What does 240 watts of assistance feel like? Well, I'd say it's similar to having someone next to you pushing you up the hill with one hand. So you're getting that boost, but compared to the Levo or the Kinevo, those ones feel like someone's shoving you up the hill with two hands. So it is a noticeable difference. Um, you're still getting that assistance though, so that gives you the, the incentive to tackle some climbs you probably wouldn't want to take on, on a regular bike. That power delivery is nice and smooth, as long as you keep a little bit faster cadence. I typically pedal a little slower, I'd say, on a traditional bike. Um, and then with this bike, I found that if I pedal a little quicker, you could just keep that power output even and just kind of cruise around. You know, if you're going up some tight switchbacks, if you just keep pedaling through them where you might normally coast, just, just kind of keeps trucking along up the hill. It pedals pretty well too. They put a digressive tune on that shock. So the shock is specifically tuned to be used with the e-bike. So basically when you're pedaling, that initial part of the travel is a little bit more firm. This keeps it from bobbing up and down with every pedal stroke. Um, on really, really steep climbs, ones like again, you probably wouldn't tackle on a traditional bike. I did find the front end got a little bit light and you kind of have to take a little bit different riding style almost. Really scoot forward, 
get your hands out to keep the front end down. You know, do kind of wonder if they want even slacker, maybe extend those chainstays again, what it would do. Um, but then again, that would change the whole kind of character of the bike that they're going for. We are talking about how this is a light e-bike, but compared to your typical mountain bike, 38 pounds, it's a little bit heavier. On this bike, it actually improves the performance when you're going downhill. It just kind of lets you carve in those corners. It feels more stable. It kind of feels like a burlier stump jumper. So if you've ridden the stump jumper, this bike, you feel really familiar, but that kind of extra beefiness when you're, you know, cornering or just kind of going in a straight line, just really hugs the ground pretty well. Yeah, it's pretty interesting just to see what the difference weight makes in that regard. When you go need to pop over something, kind of unweight, you can say you got a down log or just a little jump or something, it is pretty easy to get off the ground compared to the heavier bikes, you know, whether that's a Levo, Kinevo, or just, uh, you know, different manufacturers e-bike, where those ones, the weights can push mid 40s, even into 50 pounds, and they can take a, you know, a lot of effort to really bunny hop, that type of thing. This bike, a lot easier, feels a lot more normal. There's one little thing I didn't like that much, and that's the noise of the motor. Um, it's not very loud, but it is kind of high-pitched buzz. And it's probably not gonna bother everybody. I got these big ears, they're kind of sensitive, so that was a noise every once in a while. I was like, oh, I don't, I just didn't really like that that much. Um, the reason for that noise is that this is a gear-driven motor compared to the belt-driven one, so like the Levo and the Kinevo, those ones are a little bit quieter. There's gonna be several different models in this lineup, and the price range is pretty large. It begins at around $6,000, goes all the way up to $16,000. And that's not even the S-Works. They have one called the Founders Edition. Um, that gives you wireless everything, just basically no holds barred, top of the line, but again, Prices start at six grand and go all the way up to 16,000, multiple models in between. So who's the Levo SL for? Well, I see it as being for someone that, you know, they're looking for that motorized assistance, but they don't necessarily need all the power all the time. You know, they don't mind working maybe a little harder on the climbs in order to benefit from that lighter weight that this bike has. And that lighter weight does make a difference. You know, you can maneuver it on the trails easier. And then at the end of your ride, you need to lift your bike up, put it in the tailgate, that's easier too. So, you know, it's kind of sits in a nice range where it's different enough from that Levo and the Kinevo that has its own little spot, and I think it does make sense. There you have it, that's the new Specialized Levo SL. What do you think? Does the idea of a lightweight e-bike sound more appealing than a big, heavy, bulky one? Let us know in the comments below. Oh, they're gonna let you know. Oh, they will, either way, I don't have to ask them to. <laughs> they're already commenting now and they don't even know. <laughs>